Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response to capital projects. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below and go ahead and hit the subscribe button to find out when more videos are coming. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments of what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. If you have any suggestions of other videos you'd like me to take a look at, also let me know down in the comments. Today we're going to be looking at another video from the China Syndrome. They're explaining how a nuclear reactor works, specifically a pressurized water reactor. Let's find out how accurate they are. This is a pellet of simul... One thing I'll point out is this video is mirrored for copyright reasons. ...uranium, the exact size that's used in the fuel rods. This tiny pellet contains more energy than six carloads of coal. Oh, yeah. We have 20 million of those pellets inside the reactor vessel. That's right. Nuclear energy is very dense in terms of how much energy per unit of material that you're using to create that heat. One of the key advantages of nuclear plants is they don't <laughs> require basically a train station to be connected to it to constantly sh give them a bunch of coal. It's here. We call it the core. Around the core, of course, is what Bit of a simplification. The reactor vessel is actually not the core. The core is the arrangement of the fuel assemblies within it. The reactor vessel, um, what it does is it actually acts as another containment layer to uh, protect the core in addition to the reactor coolant system and the containment building which houses all of this structure. Water is used as a coolant. Now inside the fuel assembly is another set of rods called the control rods. These rods actually control the nuclear reaction. What happens is this. When the core is put online, that is when it's activated, the control rods are lifted out. With them gone, the nuclear fuel sets up a chain reaction that produces a tremendous amount of heat that boils the water, that turns to steam, that turns the turbine, that turns the generator, that produces electricity. That part, not a bad explanation. Obviously, there's more to it than that, and there's more re ways to control reactivity than just the control rods. Something that's to do with varying the uh, chemical concentration of boron in the water also affects um, reactivity, which is another way of saying what the reactor is doing, if it's making more fissions or less fissions, are you raising or lowering power, that we use boron in pressurized water reactors because boron actually absorbs a lot of neutrons instead of their uranium. So if you have more boron, there's less fissions. If you think of boron as a, or boric acid rather, as a liquefied form of those control rods. But I see what he's getting at. Not a bad high level explanation. But there's one major thing he left out as far as a pressurized water reactor. The pressurizer. <laughs> yes, everything that's done in the reactor vessel is at very high pressure um, on the order of 2200 PSIG+. Plus. Um, so that water, it's water, but it's very hot water on the order of over 500, 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, the pressurizer is a very important piece of the pressurized water reactor that he left out. Um, one thing that he probably should have emphasized with this being the press and all, um, you see the red-orange loop right there? That's the bits that are radioactive. Note that it is all contained. It is within the containment structure, as you see on this diagram I've got from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And as well as the black outline, that is another pressure boundary uh, with the reactor vessel, um, the reactor coolant system, which is that loop with the pressurizer and the reactor coolant pump that's turning right there. Yes, um, and that entire system is the radioactive portion of the system. Everything else, he said, 
the, you mentioned the steam generator, the turbine, all the water and steam within that is not radioactive. That, that secondary loop you see right there is not radioactive. And this um, tertiary loop that you see with the uh, pump going into the condenser at the bottom, that is actually where the cooling towers and the reservoir are. Note that not all nuclear plants actually have cooling towers. Some of them just have really big reservoirs. Um, and that's what most people associate with nuclear plants. And one great misconception is that the steam rising from the cooling towers is radioactive. It's not. It's just water. So... Overall, I would give him maybe a C <laughs> in terms of his explanation. Not bad, but I would point out a few things just so the press knows how, how safe and how um, robust of a design these plants really are. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.